All right, I finally finished my book. It's It was basically done last summer, the body was, but it's all formatted now. It looks like a book. It's not just a Google Doc. It's out there in the world. It's available on Amazon for $9.99. You could look inside. That's all good news. Here's the better news. I'm going to provide a link, a free link, to a PDF of this whole beautiful book that you could read and share for free. Uh, and it's short. It's not even that long. You could read this thing in a day easily. It's only like 140 pages. Short and sweet and to the point. Like a lot of these authors, I read a lot of books, and these authors drive me crazy. They got a preface and a preface to the forward and a forward and an introduction. And I'm just like, get to the freaking point. Tell me what your idea is so I can just analyze it. So guess what? what's after my table of contents? Chapter freaking one. This is short, sweet, to the point. I could have made it way longer. This is more like a field guide. Short, sweet, to the point. What's the point? This is about the conflation and hierarchy of rights. What does that even mean? Here's the back cover. My son made this art. He's amazing. So in English, we obviously linguistically conflate different rights together. What does that mean? Conflate just mean like confuse. So we use the word right to mean proper method for an effective result. Like hold the bat the right way from the little end, not the big end. You want to hit the ball really far. That's the right way to hold the bat. We mean in accordance with moral principles, like do the right thing. We use right to mean a protected privilege under the law, civil rights, abortion rights, gun rights. We use right to mean true or accurate. One plus one equals two. That's right. And we use right to mean the direction in space. This is very like Uga, caveman. It's hard to define. You kind of have to define this ostensibly by just like pointing at it, which is ironic because it's a right hand pointing in the right direction, literally. Uh, like, how else would you define rightward direction? You could say opposite of left-hand direction. Then how do you define left-hand direction, opposite of right-hand direction? This is very low in the conceptual strata. This is about as low base as you can go. The definition in Merriam-Webster of rightward direction is funny. It's like on the side, opposite of the side that the heart is on. It's like, whoa, very ostensive point to it definition. So anyways, we obviously linguistically conflate these ideas in English. Um, my claim, my new claim in this book is that that is not a coincidence, that's not a fluke. Uh, it's a due to a deep-seated conceptual conflation, subconscious conceptual conflation amongst these rights and their opposites, the wrongs, you know, wrong as in immoral, stuff like that. Why do I say that? Well, you know, read the book if you want the whole argument. Um, all the evidence is in there, but roughly speaking, you know, you can just, first thing to look at is that it's not just English that does this. In German, recta means rightward direction, and recht means moral and the very similar word, richtige, means like proper, correct, accurate. And this happens in French. It happens in Spanish. And you can be like, oh, those are just European languages derived from each other. Fine. Uh, but there's other non-proto-Indo-European languages like Finnish, uh, Korean, Chinese, even Ethiopian, where they associate rightward direction with positive stuff, good stuff, leftward direction with bad stuff. You know, the famous one is in Latin, sinistra means on the left-hand side, also means sinister, but it goes way deeper than that. So I kept on unpacking layers. I'm just like, damn, this thing just keeps going. So read the book if you want all the, all the evidence there. But roughly speaking, what I'm saying is that the reason we conflate these things linguistically in so many languages is that there's a deep-seated conceptual conflation. Well, why does that matter? Well, if what I'm saying is right, as in accurate, then we should commit a bunch of logical fallacies. So it predicts. Any good idea should make a prediction. And this book is no exception. This book makes a prediction that if what I'm saying is accurate, people will conflate effective with moral or untrue with immoral or effective with accurate. You know, we're going to conflate these different ideas. There's 12 different permutations. So it creates a periodic table of logical fallacies. Some of them we already knew, but some we didn't. And now they're all under one paradigm. That's useful. That's useful to have. So, you know, when people discovered chemical elements, like whatever, cool. Once Mendeleev made the periodic table, though, everyone's like, oh, I get it. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I get it now. Like, now I have this. And I'm like, damn, I get it. Like, I'll be watching a debate on YouTube, and I'll be like, dang, these people are going back and forth, wasting a half hour, an hour, because one of them uses right to mean effective, and the other means moral by right. I'm like, damn, I could just help. If I could just get in there and help. I'd be like, look, you guys are conflating two different rights. So this is what I want you all to do. I want you all to be like, hey, you know, where you see this conflation of rights happening, be like, yo, yo, yo. You're conflating two different rights. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, then share this PDF, free PDF. Here, read this. You'll understand what I'm talking about. It goes deeper than that. Like, it's it's just crazy how deep this goes. Like, go look in the Bible. Look at how many references to the right hand there are. It's like 150 or something like that. Look at how many references to the left hand there are. About 15. 
which is interestingly roughly 10 to 1. That's roughly the amount of right-handed to left-handed people in the world. And the right-handed references are very positive. And the left-handed references are very negative. It's like, well, that's interesting. You might be like, ah, oh, coincidence. You know, there is a danger that like when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So it's possible I was like, oh, I was just looking for, you know, trying to confirmation bias this thing. But okay, look in the Quran then. In the Quran, also roughly 10 to 1, right-hand references to left-hand references. And I mean, it's obvious stuff. Again, right-hand connotating very positive things, left-hand connotating very negative things. This isn't like me as an English professor reading deep into these ideas, like literally in the Quran. There's this verse where it's like, hey, people of the left hand, how wretched are people of the left hand? And how righteous, you know, how wonderful are people of the right hand? Like This is just literally like in your face, blatant. This isn't me reading into a lot of this stuff. It's just a lot of blatant stuff. So uh, read this book. I mean, look, that was just a, you know, quick, quick little like little sampler. Like read the book. The book has the evidence. Like I cite every source I want, you know, all, everything's cited. Tons of interesting studies, books that you should read if you want the evidence on this stuff. So read the book uh, to, you know, get the full argument. So in the, the rest of the book is a bunch of argument, more examples, and also evidence. But maybe you still think I'm wrong. It's like, what do you mean wrong? Well, maybe you think I'm inaccurate. Okay, so here's how much I believe in this book. Go have a discussion. Spend like 20, 30 minutes with someone having a discussion about why you think my book is wrong, i.e. inaccurate, and what I predict I predict that during that discussion, you will actually demonstrate that my book is right, i.e. accurate. What do I mean? Well, during that di discussion where you're going to talk about how my book is inaccurate, you're going to use the word right like a hundred times, meaning like eight different things. And you're going to use the word wrong like a hundred times, meaning like, you know, five or six different things. And you're going to have to keep stopping yourself and be like, by right, I mean this thing. And by wrong, I mean this thing. And you're going to realize, good God, anyone watching is going to be like, damn. We use the right, the, we, we use the word right way more than I realized and wrong and in way more ways than I realized. This all happens very conceptually smoothly. Like we don't notice it. Very con subconscious. But once you like flip that switch and you realize this, you're aware of it, you know, you're like, damn, we use the word right like all over. What you're using it like it's going out of style. We're making it rain rights and we don't realize it. Like it's more than just these uses of the word right. We'll be like, blah, blah, blah. If you if it happened right here, we use it as just like a point of emphasis for spatial or temporal. Like it happened right now. Do it right now. Like you won't believe how much, once you, this switch is flipped, you're going to be like, damn. So go have that discussion about how my book is inaccurate. My prediction is you will actually demonstrate visually, audibly, how my book is accurate. That's how much I believe in this book. But again, don't, you know, don't believe it based on just what I said there. Read it. Then you'll understand. Get the full argument. Again, I could have made this thing longer. This thing could have been an encyclopedia. There's a chapter on the philosophy because like obviously right and wrong. Philosophers want to understand right and wrong. So it applies there. It applies everywhere. Like this helped me understand almost everything. This changed how I viewed the world. I think if you read this book, it'll change how you view the world. You'll become more powerful. I'm certainly more powerful now that I understand this, more competent, uh, more formidable. It's certainly in a conversation, debate, discussion. I'm trying to use this for good though. You know, I'm not... You could use this for evil. If you understand this, you can manipulate people. Don't do that. I'm providing this free because I want people to use it for good. Like if you want to, I mean, if you want to be playing 4D dimensional chess with time travel while everyone else is playing checkers during a debate, read this book. I'm like saying with this one skill, you are just going to have an ability. You'll have a gear other people don't have. Yeah. If you want to play 4D, if you, maybe you don't. Maybe you like the way you think. You want to, maybe you like checkers. So if you want to keep playing checkers, and you don't want to peel back the layers of reality to see underneath, don't read this book. But if you want to be playing 4D dimensional chess with time travel while everyone else is playing checkers, and you want to peel back the layers of reality and see underneath, read this book. I think it'll change the way you view the world. So I hope, I hope you find it as useful as I found it. Share it with as many people as you can on the conflation and hierarchy of rights.